Hello, this is Simon Bykowski from the Manchester Evening News here at Manchester City's training ground with the Etihad behind me. And uh, yeah, a few ominous clouds over the Etihad, but it's sunshine here, if you can believe that, at the, uh, the City Football Academy, the City's training ground, where we've heard from Pep Guardiola and Bernardo Silva this afternoon ahead of their Champions League game with Real Madrid. Games don't really come much bigger than than Real Madrid, and uh, you know it's a it's a treat and a privilege that City are playing them again. The first leg at the Bernabeu last week was certainly a treat. Three three, City taking the lead early on, and then uh, having to come from behind, taking the lead again to go three two up, and coming away with a three all draw that leaves things very finely poised. City are seen. As the favourites, and rightly so, they are the holders. They won the Champions League last year by knocking out Real Madrid en route to beating Inter Milan in that final. And uh, it was a big performance here at the Etihad that did it for them. A one-all draw last year in Madrid. City brought them back here and it was a 4-0 thumping. Bernardo Silva at the heart of it. Goals from Julian Alvarez and Manu Akanji. It was a real performance that kind of set the whole of Europe on notice for what City want to do in the Champions League what they were able to do last year and what they want to do again and you know I think Real arrived today with a bit of trepidation as to whether they can withstand the storm that City are going to throw at them tomorrow the message from Guardiola from the press conference is that from what he feels from what he sees in training he thinks his team are going to perform really well tomorrow night whether that is enough to beat Madrid is another matter, but I think it should worry Real that City are feeling confident. They're also in much better shape injury-wise. Obviously, last week, De Bruyne was a late pull-out due to sickness. They were missing Walker, they were missing Ake. All three of those are back. Uh, we don't know whether Walker or Ake will be fit enough to start, but the way Guardiola and Bernardo are talking about them means that they are back in training and they are looking good again. So there are options for Guardiola that he didn't have last week. And remember, Walker so important last year to stopping Vinicius Junior from uh, from reaching his potential. So City, for I think the first time this season, could have a fully fit squad, uh, and they've got it at the best possible time because they've got this quarter final with Real Madrid. They've got Chelsea in the FA Cup at Wembley, the FA Cup semi finals later this week. Not that big a turnaround between the games, so it is a very important week where, as Bernardo said today, their treble hopes could fall apart. They could lose all three competitions in a week. As it is, though, especially with those results for Liverpool and Arsenal on Sunday. It's all the momentum with City. They have the advantage in the Premier League. They have home advantage at the Etihad and a lot of noise is expected in this place behind me tomorrow night. Uh, 1894 fan group planning something very special and uh, Guardiola and the players expecting a big noise and a big presence because that's what you need in these kind of games with the Champions League. Real Madrid certainly brought that last week at their stadium and City will be hoping for the same and expecting the same because that's what what happened last year and, and what gave Real such a torrid time, really. You know, a bit of talk that Real are, are a different proposition this side th this year with uh, with Jude Bellingham in the team, without, say, Karim Benzema, they play a bit differently. Carlo Ancelotti, very good tactically as well as a man manager. And, you know, there's no real getting away from it. Like, Real are one of the best teams in Europe. Um, if you get past them, you can be monumentally more confident of winning the whole competition. If City do get past them, they've probably got to beat the next best team in the competition, whether that is Bayern or Arsenal, to get to the final. But they can worry about when, if and when, they get there. The main thing has to be uh, putting everything into Real tomorrow to try and get the result. Um, but it was interesting hearing Bernardo Silva talk about legacy. And, you know, City... Part of City's legacy was winning this Champions League last season, but they didn't want to stop there. They want to keep going. They want to dominate in the Champions League as they have done in the Premier League. And, you know, it's two finals in three years. They want to make it three in four. They want to make it back-to-back -back Champions Leagues. They want to make back-to-back -back trebles. That is what is motivating the players to push all the way. There's potentially 12 games left this season if City win all three competitions and they are absolutely chomping at the bit to be able to keep that going and to make history to be remembered you know Guardiola slightly cautioning against that that if it goes too soon then uh, they'll be in trouble but I think also he's not harming that from the players he's not pulling that back 
and uh, he's certainly welcoming their ambition to to make that history because you know this is what it is and you know I, I feel like we've watched already a lot of City versus Real games in our lifetimes that we will remember for a long old time and tomorrow could well be another one and you know everyone will hope it's for for the right reasons that see City march on and keep this treble pursuit going because it is pretty mad that City are still there you know with six weeks to go in the season they could retain the treble but all they have to do is keep going week by week and this is a bigger week than most but as I've said from the way City are preparing for this game they're quite confident that they can keep going. We're now going to hear from Pep Guardiola and Bernardo Silva ahead of this blockbuster Champions League game and uh, don't forget as well tomorrow night after the game there will be a special quick podcast uh, to go through all of the blows as these two heavyweights go at each other again. Hi Pep. Um, for you, given your background as a player and a manager, how big is a game against Real Madrid? Always have been and always will be. When you say Real Madrid, with, uh, in this competition, always a big game. Is it, is it the game inside that motivates you the most? No, it's a special for me. Of course it is. Many times uh, as a football player manager. But that, this doesn't count. Count is what you have to do to, to win tomorrow. And uh, we have to judge something. We have not done really good in Bernabeu. The result was really good. And counting where you play against the opponent you play, it's more than fine. But we have to perform a little bit better. Uh, today we have the last training. We will talk about that and go for it. Hi, but, um, last year the questions would have been about whether your team had the mentality to win the Champions League, could they do it, could they get over the line, obviously you've answered those questions. So before a big game like this, um, do you feel like the pressure's off, do you sense that the, the, for the players the pressure is off a little bit? Uh, I hope no. You need that pressure, feel that pressure and uh, that you don't want to lose the game. If you think, okay, we have done it already, we will not have this mm, piece of, of, of hunger, you know, to, to compete against the teams. So. It's true that the fact that we won it, we are, feel better all the season, comfortable, but we have to take the, the right energy. I think our people at home will help us a lot. So we sold out everything and uh, we need a lot of noise. We need a lot of presence of them, especially in bad moments, because what I said before the game in Madrid, so again, that you are 90 minutes all the time, you are, you are better. So there are moments that you have to suffer, then the results can be at birth, cannot be good. and. We need them. They, they will be. I, I don't, I'm pretty sure of that because they know we will be. So in this time of games, I'm not talking win or losing. I'm talking be present, be who we are. Uh, always we have been in the last years and had the feeling that that we are prepared. We are prepared to make to perform well at maximum our best. Otherwise, you cannot reach semi-finals against teams like Madrid. Hi, Hi Pep. Historically, this is the most difficult week of the season, really, with the schedule of the Wednesday night and then the Saturday game. We've spoken about how tough it is for the players, but how demanding is it of you as well? How do you find the time to prepare for a massive game on Wednesday and a massive game I'm on used. Saturday? I'm used. So it's long to, days, sleep it's better, it's better to be here than here. It's better to be in Wednesday, Saturday, than don't be here. So I will not complain one second about that. So it's what it is. So uh, say we have more days to prepare. Yeah, but it is what it is. So 24 hours a day is... Is a lot, so you can find a way. You have a lot of people help you. Because what's important is not uh, is to take the right decisions, and that is what it's, is what you think more than the fact of work. Because at the end, we play last season against Madrid. Last week we play. We know each other. They know us. We know them. Uh, we have to be aware. Is uh, make some surprises like Carlo has done in the in the first game, and and yeah, and, and right mentality and and. Ready to suffer and ready to to his never end until we end in a good way and a bad way. So, and and always we had momentums in it at the stadium. So we had these our momentums and hopefully extending as longer as, as possible. And and in and in that way, always we can do it. 
Hi, Pep. Can I ask you, uh, <coughs> Kyle Walker, back in the squad at the weekend, although he didn't play, um, Bernardo has just sat there and said, as the captain, he's so important to what you do, and he's pointed to those games where he's come up against opponents like Vinicius, like Mbappe, and how well he defends against them. What position is he in in terms of his availability? Could he start or is well, he I'm available going to, to play? Uh, what well, we said the last one or two trains, he trains good. He feels some, mm, but he feels good. Uh, his face, his mood, and I don't know from the beginning, I don't know on the bench, I don't know, but I think he will be, will be with us tomorrow. And as a, like Bernardo said, it's a pff, incredible good news for many reasons. So, But today now at four, we have the last training session and we decide. If he is available, how important is he in those matchups that Bernardo was talking about against those elite players? Uh, of course, it's important. So in Euro, the physicality is massive. Importantly, when you have to at the end, football is how you challenge your opponent, and and that attributes the quality from Kyle. Everybody knows it. It's special. But he was not in Bernabeu, and all the guys were were. Uh, <sighs> were exceptional because in Bernabeu we had a big, big problem because Nathan was not there, Josco was until last minute, Kai was not there. He should maybe have played with Josco there, left back John and maybe Rodi central defender. So we had a big, big problem. Now today we are a little bit better. We arrive in a better position to, you know, to switch some players and make some, some adjustment just in case we need it. So, because they make a good effort. So it's important that Kyle and, and Nathan being in the bench and they trained yesterday and they, they feel good. And the training, I say, how you feel? Yeah, I feel good, feel good. That is a good news after we decide. Hi, Pat. Uh, Jude Bellingham's been Real Madrid's best player this season. He's probably England's best player, wanted by all of England's top clubs. What does it say about him as a person to have the confidence to go to somewhere like Madrid, be their best player? And not well, maybe make the easy well, choice think to come somewhere. Yeah. I think shows Bellingham shows just arriving a, so playing a top club like Madrid, Barcelona, the other one is not easy to settle quick and he settled on quicker. <laughs> settled quicker. So in, from the beginning the impact was huge in terms of goals, in terms of presence and many things. Is you know, at his age. So I think he feels and handled the pressure without a problem, have a good, you know, mentality and yeah, he's an exceptional player. So with Ken see you have to control him, take a look what really, really he does. Would you like to see him in England? Sorry? Would you like to see him in England? I don't know, it's a question for him. I think he can for when play a national team in Wembley. So it's a question for him, I don't know. Hi, Pep. Bernardo said earlier that he feels this Real Madrid side this season is stronger than the one he faced, you guys faced last season. Do you agree with that? And if so, what do you think about Real Madrid this season is better? What worries you about them this season? Okay, maybe I'm not, I wouldn't say that I'm disagree with Bernardo, but I'm not completely agreeing either. So last season Madrid has a really, really good, different ones, but Benzema is, he moved all the positions, and Luka Modric was playing more minutes. But Luka, the, Modric, just the few minutes he played was amazing in Bernabeu. So I think it's exceptional team last season. The previous one, this one, Madrid always has a good team. This is my feeling. I know when I said good things about Madrid, the people don't believe me in Madrid. When I said uh, some okay jokes or whatever, the people always believe I am taking the piece. It's not. It's, it's not about that. So. When I was a football player, when I'm a manager, I always have a good opinion about the quality, the history of Real Madrid. I always have been that. What the people have to think about my comments is really, honestly, it's not my business. James, David, whichever. Uh, hi, Pep. Um, Bernardo was just in talking about how the players are motivated to become the first English team uh, to do the treble twice and, and win the, the, the Premier League four times in a row, back-to-back -back Champions Leagues. T to what extent can... Can you use that as motivation for the players? Because we saw in the Netflix documentary that you used the chance to create history as a as a motivational tool. Is, is that something you can draw on again? The chance to create fresh but history. I, I would like. I am not going to to say don't feel this to my players when they feel it. I have a different opinion. We are far away from that hypothetical dreams. So we are in the final FA Cup when we are one or two games left with, uh, I don't know, three, four, five points advantage, and we are already in final champions, I will, I will start to think about that. But 
before game against Madrid, we are, you know, you see yesterday Chelsea how strong they are, and Saturday and after, what is two points difference when they did to play? When I was two points down, Arsenal Liverpool, I was thinking we have to do our job. It's not over. Now we are two in front. It's not over. It's the same feeling I have the previous weeks when we draw against Arsenal and the people say. No chance of the computer. The computer. I don't know the computer. Play right back or left back. I don't know how to discover that. When the computer say you don't have chance, and now you have chance, so nothing changed for me. So it's six games. We have a lot of difficult games, home and away, with opponents. We have, they have, both of them. And it's just one game at a time. A game at a time means Madrid tomorrow. What do you have to do to beat them? And a step by step. And when, uh, honestly, I start to think in the travel when we beat United and FA got final last season. And after I said, okay, well, now I'm going to get my way to do something exceptional. But the success for me this season is that we are still we are there. So after winning the travel, I'm still being in that position with the four weeks, five weeks, six weeks, depend the finals of the FA Cup or Champions League. Being in contention to be there is heads off, it's chapeau, it's incredible. But at the same time, we are here, extend this chance one more week, one more week. So, and this is what we try to do tomorrow and Saturday and next games. Pep, when you played um, Real Madrid in the Champions League with Barcelona, particularly in 2011, I mean, there was so much noise off the pitch in those games. It was intense, toxic, extreme. Is it, is it a relief almost now that, it, that it's just about the football? And in a way, does it feel less pressure <clears throat> on those games than you faced back in 2011? Yeah, but this is what it is. So I want to tell you what it is. You could not control that time what happened. I cannot control what happened here. I can control here in front of you, my job and the rest. Not do it. Of course, Barcelona, Madrid, Madrid, Barcelona is, is so special for many, many reasons for history. And when you play semi-final Champions League or this, it's normal. But uh, it looks like a long time ago. We live it there, experience that. Now it's different, yeah, of course it's different, but at the same time it's a football game, they want to beat us, we want to beat them. And and uh, I know, I had the feeling that we will perform well. We we are excited, happy, nervous a little bit, uh, have a mix of feelings before uh, tomorrow that is nice to have it. I said before your colleagues, so it's better to be here than don't be. You know, it's a, well, it's a lot of games. Forget about it. In October, November, I complain a lot of games. The still is far away, but we are one month away. Being in those competitions again after win two titles this season, three last season at home, that uh, we believe we can do whatever we can with uh, incredible energy, with our people. We feel safe. We feel protect. We feel support. We feel we know we can handle the momentums and we can do a lot of things in a few times and. And yeah, from the beginning we are going for it. We are going. We have a game plan. I believe in that. Yeah, we go. We no lose. Pfft. We lose against Madrid. Shake hands. Congratulations. For sure we will deserve it. We you try. We want to play for the fact that we reach semi-final and we deserve it. I want to play because we deserve to be in semi-final. This is what I want. And for that we know exactly what you have to do. We, are, we know it. Last other English, please, guys. Yeah. Uh, Pat, hi. hi. Uh, Bernardo said that we cannot compare this game tomorrow night game uh, with last year game. Um, so I would like to know um, which way uh, tomorrow night game uh, will be really different, and uh, is that week is this week the most difficult week uh, for your team uh, of the season? Mm. What if, listen, if, if yesterday we played against Madrid, the game last season, we played today, it will be different. So, not any game is completely the same as the last season. So, of course, we will not be like last season. <laughs> we know it. They learn, we learn. It's impossible. We know each other better. So, we know it. But in the same time, we, we will try to, to, to do what you have to do. And it's the most difficult week. It's what it is. I've said before, I prefer, you know, to play. Of oh, difficult, yeah, it is. But the guys of the teams cannot play that. It's not difficult, but they cannot play it. And it's nice to be here. Again, you know, you know, you had the chance to be for four years in a row semi-final Champions League. This is something exceptional for a club like Manchester City. Exceptional. So we have the chance to be, wow, well, four years in a row semi-final with two finals. And this is the, the dream. This is the, the target. This is what you have to try to do.
Hi, Bernardo. Um, last season, when you won everything, people said it's historic. It had only ever been done once before in English football. But yet here you are with the possibility of doing the same again. Are you at all surprised that this group has put itself in a position to do something that clearly has never been done before? Well, not surprised, no, because um, this this group has proved throughout the the years that that we're capable of 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 getting to the final month of the season, fighting for all the competitions, and now it's where everything, all the the, the, the tough things start because it's it's not easy. It's not easy, obviously. That's why only two two teams. Um, won the travel in, in English football because it's not it's not easy but we're very happy to be in a position where we can fight for for all of them knowing that it's not easy our opponents are are really really good but we're there so we're we're really happy to be in this position and it's it's another big challenge for us yeah sorry um where do we go to Ben Hi, Bernardo. um <coughs> I just wonder off the back of the weekend with the way the results went, you played first, you won convincingly, you've then seen Liverpool and Arsenal drop points in the title race. Does it really feel now like that treble, that league title particularly, is right in your hands and that this is a team that doesn't give that up very often, does it? Well, it, it was obviously a very good weekend for us. We're not going to deny that because personally I wasn't expecting both teams to drop points. And before we didn't depend on ourselves, so we had to, to do our job and wait for them to drop points. And now the situation changed a bit because we just depend on ourselves. If, you, if we do our job properly, we, we win the Premier League. So, yeah, happy with, with the results in the weekend, not going to deny that. But a long way to go. So, two weeks ago, when we played Arsenal, uh, Everything looked like, like it was gone, and now everything looks like Man City is going to win the Premier League. Maybe in two weeks everything will change again. So football, that's why football is so beautiful, because things change so quick. And um, you need to be really focused game by game. Uh, it's, it's, not, it's not right to, to start thinking about travels and all these kind of things, because it's not realistic. It's game by game. We have Madrid tomorrow. Then on the weekend we have another tough game against Chelsea in the FA Cup. Then we have the Premier League. And in one week we, can, we could lose all three competitions as well. So we need to be really focused game by game to do our job well. And to, to extend this, this, this hope for, for one more week, maybe one more, and then eventually we'll do it again. Oh. Hi Bernardo, you obviously beat Real Madrid 4-0 four here, four here last season the best performance of the season. How much of that match have you watched back and how much confidence does that give you knowing that you could do that to them? Well, I'm going to be honest, I, I didn't watch the game back. Uh, so I only have the feeling of, 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 what, of, of what we did on the pitch on that day. Um, two, di two, two different seasons. Uh, it never happens. The same game in football, it never happens uh, again. So... I, I feel I feel Madrid is, is is stronger this season than they were last season. That's my, that that was my feeling when we played them uh, at the Bernabeu, and uh, for sure they'll they'll want a bit of revenge for that result as well. So it's going to definitely be a very different game tomorrow. Bernard, to the bay. I would like to ask you about Kroos and Modric, uh, two of potentially the best midfielders that we've, mm -hmm. we've ever seen or lately yeah. in football. I would like to ask um, if there are inspirations for you, what do you take from their game and what do you think about them nowadays? Definitely, definitely role models and the inspiration for me personally because they play more or less in a position where I can play. And uh, the consistency, you, you, you see it's not just one, one or two seasons. They've been doing this for uh, for 15 years. Modric even even longer because he's a bit older than 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 than, than Tony Kroos. Uh, and after everything they achieved, they they keep going, and they're they're just such an example for for all the kids that are starting to play football, to see the way they behave on the pitch, and um, 
and uh, how important and how, how collective they don't think about themselves they think about the team and the way they play all the decisions they make it's all about the team and that's a big example for everyone that plays the game and I think it's the way that the game should be played yeah. Bernardo just um, just going back to the Real game at home last year um, it felt like the well, Valverde said over the summer that it was the most difficult stadium he's ever played in and mentioned the, the way that you play, but also the, the supporters. Are you able to just look back on the, on the night as a, as a whole and how you felt between yourselves and, and the fans and, and what that did for you? Well, yeah, uh, we, 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 have, we, we had that feeling and we still have the feeling that at home we're very strong with our people. Um, and it just felt, after what happened the season before, when uh, when uh, when we were knocked out by Madrid at the Bernabeu, the way that that happened, we wanted to put things right in a way for us, and uh, and that performance was was also a bit of a, an apology to our fans in a way for what happened the season before, because we knew that that we owe them uh, another chance to win the competition, and we finally did it, and um, and yeah, now this season. It's, it's a different game for sure, uh, different teams, they, they had their signings, we had our signings and, and players that left, uh, different forms, so let's see what's, what's going to happen tomorrow, but, but we're very confident because we play at home, knowing that we play against probably, well not probably, the kings of the competition, so we have a lot of respect for Madrid and we know how tough it's going to be. Hi Bernardo, I just wanted to ask about Kevin De Bruyne. How did his absence affect the, your performance in the first leg and how important is it that he's back for the second leg and how will that change the way you play? Well, Kevin, when Kevin is, is present, uh, everything is different because he's, he's one of the best players of our generation. So we're not going to deny that, that we're better without Kevin than with Kevin. So definitely a big boost for the team to have him back. And... Uh, yeah, hopefully he's on a good day because when he's on a good day, it's difficult to stop him. Go oh, here, please, Sam. Hi, Bernardo. When you look at the season as a whole and going back to October, November, December, when you were playing well but conceding a lot of goals, mm -hmm. not getting the results, but obviously now you've not lost since December, now started scoring a lot of goals, the mentality of Madrid last week to come back from setbacks. Mm -hmm. How do you explain the kind of ups and downs of this season? Has there been like a tactical development? Is it attitude, mental? I don't, I, well, there's always an explanation, of course, but I think it's a mix of, of, of very different things from, from a team that, that won the travel to come back. It's on a little bit of a hangover from winning the travel and to have that hunger again, to go again every three days, three days, it's not easy. Also, it was a mix of, of, of having a lot of players injured in, in, in that time. Uh, of having new players arriving to the team and, and big players that left. Uh, so our captain from last season, for example, Gundogan or, or Riyad Mahrez, uh, people left, so new players had to adapt. And it's not easy to adapt to a new club. And then uh, I remember it was a time where we had a lot of defenders injured and we had uh, also Rodri suspended, which no one can deny is a very important player for us. Kevin De Bruyne with a long injury. So everything put together. Sometimes the team is not all is not perfect, and uh, what what our 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 feeling inside the team and what and what we agreed and we wanted we really wanted to do was to fight the, the, the as much as we could to give ourselves a chance at the end of the season to still fight for all the competitions. No. Not, not be 20 points ahead of, of Arsenal and Liverpool, but to be there with them, to fight. And, and, and uh, we're very happy that, that we could achieve this. And uh, now we can fight for all the three competitions, even with the ups and downs that you said, they were true. There was a time in the season when the team was not playing well. We were, we were not controlling the games. It, the games were very transitional games, which is not the way we like to play. We like to control, to control the tempos. Uh, we were conceding a lot of chances, conceding a lot of late goals, which is not uh, which is not normal for for our team. Um, but yeah, with the with with the effort of all of us, with a bit of extra from every player, we we managed to get better, to to be more solid, 
And uh, as you said, I think since December or something that that we we haven't lost a football game. So we're happy to to get to this part of the season with the chance to to still fight for the three more, more most important competitions. One more in English, and then we'll move into Spanish. Jamie. Hi, Bernardo. Hi. Um, I understand that you take each game at a time, and that's the only way you can be. But y you could not only win the treble again; it'd be consecutive, you know, two years in a row. If that was to happen, you'd probably be the greatest team ever, I would suggest, because it's never been done before. Can that inspire you? I understand you have to, you know, take each game at a time, but can that inspire this team to sort of, you know... Of course, that? obviously, inspiration and uh, motivation, uh, because uh, we know how well this team has done in the, in the last... Uh, I've been here, this is my seventh season. Uh, and uh, we want to create that legacy and uh, we want to win another Premier League to do six in seven years and to do four Premier Leagues in a row. And we want to win the, the, the Champions League to, to win two in a row that only Madrid did once three, three in a row, but no one, no one else won Champions, consecutive Champions League, if I'm not mistaken. And if we can win the two travels in a row that no one did, that would be legacy. So that's definitely motivation, knowing that it's very, very difficult. Because, uh, because as I said, in one week we could be out of all the competitions. Uh, but we're, we're fighting. We're fighting for it and we're going to do everything in our power to each day be a step closer to, to that goal.